Would you guys like to go around and do introductions? I'm not sure if everybody knows everybody here. Anybody can start. Sure. I'm Jake, the site management consultant. I've been doing projects at the Holly House and also work with Carolyn. And I'm Carolyn and I'm the uh, artist in residence working on some projects around the house as well. Bill Koenig, I am uh, not with you directly or uh, <clears throat> directly involved, but uh, very interested in what Carol's up to and hoping to be supportive in some way. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Carolyn. So uh, for the folks that just joined, we are actually going around and we're doing introductions. And just note that this, has been re this is being recorded so that whatever you miss, you'll be able to, after this meeting, I'll send you a link and you'll be able to actually see the introductions of the folks that you missed. So with that said, welcome Quest. Would you like to do your introduction of who you are and how you're involved in this project? Um. How am I involved in this project? Come on, Rashada, you tell that part. <laughs> you have to do the introduction. It's your introduction. <laughs> um, I am an old neighbor at the TK with Rashana. We had a happenstance meeting that was probably about 72 hours and fell in love. And after that, our spirits intertwined. I am a tiny home enthusiast, an abstract and contemporary visual artist. And I have been building and doing community development for probably the last 15, 20 years. It just was a match made in heaven. So I have watched some of the videos and am eager to finally step out of the shadows and say hello to you all. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction of yourself. Hello, Shirley. Welcome. Would you like to do an introduction of yourself, please? Oh, and Paul Jackson just joined us. Paul, we are actually going around and doing introductions. And just so you know, there this is being recorded so that you can also go back and watch the introductions that you missed. So it's Shirley. Welcome. Oh, I love your energy. It's so positive, uplifting. <laughs> sister girl, sister girl. My, my name is Shirley Hussar. I'm a real estate developer from California. I graduated from USC Financial Real Estate Development. So I build and do infrastructure and infield development. Um, I've worked with uh, developers with land where we subdivided and work with geologists and, and work with um, engineering and, and, and creating topo maps. And tiny homes have always been an interest for me because being from California, we have so many homeless people and uh, the, we, we need alternatives for cost factor. The cities and the country's not doing anything. Um, I have a company called CalTexasHomes.com where um, we're in California and, we're, and I'm working with someone in Texas on some tiny homes we're talking. And uh, also I would like to see if we see more African-American people go back to the South do a reverse migration because we realize that the government's not going to take care of us and that we need to take care of ourselves. So I'm a real estate agent, real estate developer, and uh, always looking to see where I can come in and, and work with people. That was an amazing introduction. Thank you so much. That was so inspiring to me. <laughs> I'm excited that you came to join us today. It's so exciting. Um, with that said, thank you everybody for giving amazing introductions. Welcome to today's BIPOC Sustainable Tiny Art House Community bi-weekly community info update next steps sessions. Um, and in these sessions, we as the current consultants just kind of go around and give updates around what we've been doing, what going on, what's happening, where we're at in the process of the project. Um, and then at the end, we basically set intentions for what's going to happen next. Um, and we love that all of these amazing people show up and some are consistent, some, you know, come in and out. 
um, some stay, but are coming every other month. And so it's just really cool to see how this is growing due to all of you amazing people and your wealth and knowledge bank. <laughs> <laughs> and and for me, it's so inspi inspirational because I feel like that's the only reason this project has actually lifted off the ground and is actually going at like breakneck speed. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. With that said, um, let's start with the BIPOC stack. I say stack for short acronym instead of sustainable tiny art house community because it's much shorter. So with that said, um, I'd like to take a moment to go around and give honor to um, just something today that happened to you that was really positive and in one word. If you could like say this morning, what was an inspiration to you or what word you could describe that? If everybody could go around and just say one thing and I can go last. <laughs> I'll go. Uh, my word for the day is bustling. That's juicy. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Connection. You've been using connection for a long time. That's a good word too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Community. Communities like connection, it's, they're both very similar. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Quest. Um, family? Family. Thank you, JJ. I like that one too. They're all kind of running along the same parallel thread. We're all on the same needle, right? Design. <laughs> Scripture. Scripture. Ooh. That rings so many different things in my head. <laughs> it brings balance. I think we, we're workaholics and we forget about that spiritual side and how we need to get quiet and meditate. Oh, totally. Well, and trying to find the time for that too, right? It's like a whole nother. Right. That's why you said yeah. the first thing you wake up in the morning, I said, let me read a scripture. Let me thank God for the day and let me just breathe. And then put my mind in engulfed in all this other stuff. Thank you for that. Inspirational. Carolyn? Are you there? I think I I, I think I already did my bustling. Oh, yes. A, Bustling. Very action-packed morning already. <laughs> well, I think that's everybody. Mine would be, um, I think, on it. I've been on it all morning, just like really focused and really um, jazzed and just had really great um, news. <laughs> And really, yeah, that, that would be mine <laughs> on it in a positive way. <laughs> um, well, thank you, everybody, for, uh, I think Paul is coming right back in again. Um, thank you, everybody, for uh, participating in that. So that is just an example of what our actual consultant staff meetings are like. I love to start meetings and sessions off with, like, a word that um, is inspirational or cultural so that folks actually get to know each other a little bit. And so the longer you do that, the more we get to know about each other over the long haul. So thank you for participating in that. Um, so with that said, I would like to go around and have all of the consultants or um, resident artists actually speak a little bit about their updates and what's going on right now currently in their world. Um, JJ, would you like to go first? Is that okay? If not, um, maybe Carolyn might want to go first. Oh, that's fine. So, once again, I'm JJ, the site management consultant. Um, let's see. We've been working on a lot of stuff at the house. Um, Going to be possibly doing the deck soon, maybe if it's not raining. 
I don't know. Definitely working on um, getting this room leveled off. Uh, one of the extra rooms that's going to be like uh, used. But a lot of the house is pretty much ready for use. Um, there's some other things that need to be done, but um, other than that, yeah, just working on the house. Thanks, JJ. Um, and I won't, normally I get out to the house once a week and, and work on some projects. I've got a pretty bustling, uh, has, obviously that's where it is in my head, like run, run. Um, I've got a lot going on over, over in the studios up on the hill this week. Um, but uh, one of the things I am putting some thought and work into is uh, deciding what day we want to sort of like once we officially decide on what day we want to do that, the, the roof raising for um, the first house on the property, sort of like uh, creating the event around that. And for those of you who don't know me, um, I run uh, Blue Cone Studios up on Capitol Hill, and we put out a yearbook of artists and creators and cultural workers, sort of like a you know, cute little directory of, of folks and, and we uh, do photo shoots so that people, anybody can come and be involved. And uh, so we wanted to put that up and, and make that be a part of raising the roof, but then also get some of the youth that we mentor. Cause another thing we do at Blue Cone is um, mentor a handful of youth right now. We've got some um, interns through the workforce development program at Northwest Folklife. And I like to get them out you know, like working on different kinds of projects, um, learning different little skill sets. So they'll be the team that'll be helping us uh, put the tiny houses up out in Bell at the, the art museum. And then when we get to the property, um, but they also do other things such as play music and, um, and, and lead ciphers. So, sorry, I'm, I wanna get this all in there. I know I'm getting it out. Um, I was talking- No, please do all of it. <laughs> so, so what I wanted to do, so the Community Care Coalition, who I linked up with last year, they've got some funds around trauma-informed care, and um, I'm, I'm tight with Idris that, that helps uh, Ish run that, and I wanted to sort of like, you can do sort of little grants up to like $2,500 with a good proposal, so I kind of wanted to do a proposal around... Um, around the roof raising, raise the roof, you know what I mean? Or um, uh, putting the house up so that we could, and you know, make a nice little party out of it but so that we could pay the youth to come and, and make music and also help um, coordinate the event um, and, and sort of make a whole thing of it. So that's kind of, even though I'm not out there in person this week um, doing physical projects, that's just kind of where my, uh, what I've been wrapping my mind around trying to see what we can make happen there so that we could throw a nice event without, you know, and, and also have the budget to, to do it and serve community because I think um, housing is like the number one path, <laughs> like is a, is, a, is a good step in trauma-informed care because there's a lot of trauma around our um, housing insecurity, especially amongst a, a number of the um, young artists that I work with. So we're excited. I'm, we'll, we'll, once we figure out what, uh, what date we'll do it, we can start uh, navigating that. It's just got to be after the 22nd of, of uh, November because one of my kids is out of town till then. That's me. I um, relinquished my time. Thank you so much, but I'm actually going to ask you a follow-up question if that's okay. Um, so, can you tell folks a little bit more about, like you gave a brief overview of the yearbook project, but I think also it'd be really cool to um, talk about how you're actually going to incorporate that in the Raise the Roof project. Remember the piece about, we talked, I think it was um, a couple weeks ago, we were actually having a conversation about having folks be able to take photos here because usually what Carolyn does is her project bounces all over the city and it's like a pop-up and artists can just show up and they get their photo taken and then 
the, this yearbook is actually a catalog of all of the artists that actually show up over a period of time. I think you do it like for a month long. Yeah, there it is. It's almost like a, 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 a it's called a yearbook. It's beautiful. Um, and I've actually done it quite a few times and you get a lot of um, folks that actually cherish this book and share it. It's a major resource actually. Um, so could you yeah. say how, talk a little bit about how you're going to incorporate that also as a part of Race the Roof? So folks know that it's actually an event. It's not just like, you're just, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, sure, because that's what I was, that's what I was thinking about for it. So um, here's, here's the first two books we did. Uh, we started in 2018, 2019. I wasn't able to pull it off uh, 2020, obviously, because that was, um, what it was and uh, I, I, I tried to do it digitally but the reality is is that like this is an engagement process where people will come like uh, generally they'll come to our studio like uh, during Art Walk Capitol Hill Art Walk so we'll be open at Liminal Studios which is on 11th Avenue next to Vermilion um, every second Thursday well for November and December we will we'll be on the waterfront this uh, uh, on Friday, doing an event there, and we'll set it up. So I, I really just try to get out. We were at, at Substation a couple weeks ago, and I try to, you know, within our budget and our capacity, get to as many places as possible um, so that as many people have an opportunity to participate. And then, so because the real, the real goal, besides having sort of like a really cute yearbook of artists and, you know, I've got a lot of kids that didn't, ever have an opportunity to get in yearbooks or be in yearbooks and um but also what we have is everybody's social media handles and ultimately through blue cone and uh the other uh company that we that i run which is forever safe spaces um creating a digital catalog of connections so that we can ultimately get these resources and the Folks that are in here be able to con you know be able to find each other for collaborations for resource sharing um uh and art projects and jobs and when you know because a lot of people reach out to me asking if i know somebody who does this do you know a welder do you know a this and a that and so like the more people we can sort of identify in community at you know and find and have sort of a, a central place where we might be able to like find folks. I know everybody tries to do that, but we've, we've actually, you know, accrued, you know, built a pretty good little network. And so that would be a part of, we would bring our whole photo shoot out there. Um, so that anybody that shows up, I, we, we've had babies in the book and dogs. Usually we say it's artists, but I can make an argument for everybody's career to be art. You know what I mean? I'm like, I've got mathematicians in here. You know, we got the healing arts and the culinary arts and everything's a freaking art, isn't it? Um, so uh, yeah, so this will be just another opportunity for people down in that neighborhood that that maybe, and, and in these networks that maybe don't make it up to the hill or haven't heard of the project, come be involved. And then what we'll do is in February, the books will come out. We usually throw a big party um, where everybody can pick up their books and sign everybody's books and then we'll throw a show and we usually have a market and we usually have tattoo artists so it that also is a great fun event um, and we all so we end up we end up selling the books um, and they're $50 but I've always done a thing where people can buy one and donate one so that we I always try to make sure that as as many of our, our people that can't afford them, that anybody that can't and wants a book can get a book. And that's my, that's my thing on the yearbook. So it's, it'd be great to be a part of it um, and have it, I like, you know, have it, a, we pro we'll probably set that up either in the house or, or maybe in the front. Yeah, I love it. I'm excited for it to be here. <laughs> Thank you for giving us an update about that, yeah. <laughs> Um, so that's one really cool thing that's also happening, um, and we're looking at the end of November for that as well. So yeah, um, so I I will go around and I'll give some of my updates, and then what I'd love to do is go around for folks that are here today to maybe give an update that they have um, that might be related to the project or um, ideas that they 
have gathered after hearing folks speak. Um, so that's the next step after this one. So my basic updates have to do with um, the two grants that we are currently actually, is it two S? Yeah, it's two grants that we're actually um, going very well, basically. Um, the first one was the Tenants Fund grant, and that one we actually made it to the second round, and it's a million dollar grant that we applied for in terms of um, not only capacity building, but also in terms of um, the ability to actually build, so construction money or real estate money or so the way we split it up was $750,000 basically for build and $250,000 for capacity building. So that would allow us to hire more folks and, or not even necessarily hire more folks, but that is part of the vision is to get two more part-time consultants. One that's an actual architect, not a pro bono architect. The other one, we're looking at somebody who can actually be like side by side with um, JJ so that he doesn't have to be managing the house like all day, every day, <laughs> forever. <laughs> and, and we've started his schedule off very minimal anyway, just because we don't want to like soak up all of his time since he already lives in the house. Anyway, so so we're looking at that. So $250,000 and $750,000, which was a million dollar ask. And we made it to the second round. And so for that particular grant, we're going to have a site visit in December. And they will actually come to the site and, um, you know, get a tour. And then we'll tell them what's going on and all that really great stuff. So that's one update, which was really exciting for me. The other one is the second grant. Um, that we also made it to the second round, and we just had our second round interview today through, um, which grant is it? Environmental Justice Fund Grant, um, and that one was for $75,000, which is all capacity kind of slash, it's basically general funding, it's not necessarily one pot of either or actually can think about it, yeah, it's, it's basically, um, not that we could use it for whatever we want. It has to go towards housing in some form, but it has to be sustainable. And so we proposed um, more tiny houses, basically. Um, so that's the second grant that was really amazing. And then the third grant I just applied for is the, um, oh my gosh, what is it? It's through Seattle Foundation and it's a neighbor to neighbor grant and it was for 7,500. And that grant was amazing because we got to work and actually um, have enough time to really understand how or what type of data we would need for this project. And so part of the grant that I just spoke about, that's a million dollars, the $250,000, we actually want to use that funding, part of that funding to survey the entire neighborhood in terms of who owns land, who are middle to low income folks, who are artists in those particular areas, and not only artists, but business owners, like small business owners, people that work from home, um, elder folks, because we know that there's Seattle Foundation is like right next door to us. Um, and there's a school like three blocks down. So we really want to kind of build an infrastructure where um, we're not asking folks to come to us. We're actually going to the community to do surveying and getting data around who is really interested in something like this in terms of actually keeping not only the neighborhood the way it is, but building up on that in terms of actually building it together, right? Um, so that's the other piece of that is that the third grant is the neighbor to neighbor grant and what that grant allow would allow us to do um, is to basically not only if if we do not get the $75,000 I'm thinking of this, this it's a smaller grant for like 7,500 bucks where we would actually utilize that money to um, hire one person that would do surveying for two months and just kind of infiltrate the neighborhood. So this is making a really positive way. <laughs> um, and just really find out like, what do people really want? You know, would they really do, can we get like a whole community on board with tiny houses? Like, and we all start buying up the property ourselves and all that other stuff. Like that's kind of where I'm at, right? 
that grant. So three grants down, two were already like almost over the hurdles. And um, one of the cool things about the um, first grant that I spoke about is it actually, um, they only had 11 people apply and they're gonna accept seven groups. So they had 11 groups apply and they're going to accept seven of those groups. So the potential for us to actually like get the million dollars is really high. And so I'm really excited, <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> anyway, so those are, that's my kind of financial update. Um, actually, I have one more financial update. The other thing is that um, Carol and I have been talking about uh, Give Big and so have Miss Jessie and I, and Miss Jessie couldn't attend this meeting this morning. She is our um, programming consultant on the project, and she's helping us build our membership base. And she's also the one that is um, the founder of Harriet Tubman um, Foundation for Safe Passage. And so she, as a consultant coming in, she's helping also with the surveying of the community. Um, part of the funding from the million dollars is split. So she would also help us build that aspect of it, the surveying, the programming, getting the space used and getting folks walking through the building in order to actually start um, understanding sustainability in like a live work space and a housing space, right? So with Give Big, we met with Sustainable Seattle, which is our fiscal sponsor, and we're able to tag them for an actual training on Give Big. And this will be the first time that I've actually done Give Big digitally. Like I remember when Give Big wasn't, it was like this tiny thing and not a lot of people were doing it and now everybody's doing it. And so I'm a little intimidated, but I did, we did get a training, which was really great. Me and Miss Jessie. Um, and so I'm just plugging along on that and trying to get our ducks in a row so that we can actually coordinate our give big strategy around our raise the roof build day, which will also um, possibly be what Carolyn was talking about in terms of the yearbook day as well. So I really want to have give big be this highlight of a week as opposed to like just give Tuesday. And so um, one of the things we've also talked about with Give Big is that we will, um, folks really wanted to see highlight of artists, right, that are interested in housing and interested in actually um, purchasing a tiny house. And so there's already a list of about 15 artists have signed on, but about seven artists are very consistent in terms of actually um, participation. And so as a part of Give Big, I'm actually reaching out to those artists to find out if they would like to be highlighted and be sponsored, you know. Um, so that's another piece of Give Big that I'm working on. It's really exciting. Um, I think actually those are all of my updates. <laughs> I think that's, I've like, <laughs> are there questions about anything that I said? I, if I have other updates I, that come to me, I will definitely, uh, chime back in or if I've missed anything that you know that I've missed Miss um, Carolyn or JJ please chime in but I think those are the biggest things right now on the radar I guess we could talk about Bellevue Art Museum a little bit I think that I think you've covered a lot of things I think for the art museum we're just kind of waiting on delivery right yeah basically so the art museum, I don't know if folks know what that is. Um, we ordered three tiny houses that are being shipped November 8th. Two of those tiny houses are 12 by 10s. One of the 12 by 10 is gonna go in the backyard at the Holly House, which is the residency, resident artist center, BIPOC artist center, um, which is where JJ lives. And that house is going to be a prototype. So we're thinking of the Holly House as like a launch prototype so that folks can actually get a feel or see what it would look like to have the main house be a central point where everybody can do stuff that they want to do. But then these tiny houses are the houses that folks actually live in and, you know, are surrounding and they share this space in some capacity. So in order to do that, we had to have a tiny house on the property, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> so we've just ordered three tiny houses, which is really amazing. Um, the 12 by 10 will go in the back. Then there will be an eight by 12, which is really small. It's their smallest size. And we're going to turn that one into a sauna space for like two to four people. And then the other 12 by 10 is going to the Bellevue Art Museum because it got that proposal got accepted into their architectural um, exhibition that runs from November to, I think, um, April 2022. Um, and so one of those tiny houses will be directly shipped there, which is really cool. And I'll create an installation out of that tiny house, which is awesome. Um, and that particular installation is also one of the examples that Carolyn was talking about earlier about um, having mentors that will also be assisting in that build at Bellevue Art Museum, which will be really exciting because I just, I love when people shout out other people <laughs> and, and knowledge transfers, transfer to like, you know, the next generation. I love that. Anyway, so that's the big thing around all that. Did you want to add? Because I feel like I've been talking for a minute. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yes, please do questions. Okay, so I've always dealt with normal houses, right? But we always talk about tiny houses and regular houses, middle class and poor class. I mean, I mean upper class, 1% and poor class. And my mindset is that middle class. I, I uh, like I said, I have a company called Cal Texas Home. So I'm in California today and then I'll fly back to Texas. And I, you know, and I'm born and raised Southern California. And what I've learned in California, because of the way the economy is here, everything is just leveraged and all the properties are a million dollars. So a young family would really have a hard time trying to own a house here. On the other hand, in Texas, these people own their properties free and clear. I meet people who will do a sell a carry back. You want to buy this house? We'll carry the loan. You're like, really? Or in California, nobody can carry the loan. So where tiny houses come to mind for me is I'm always fascinated by shows that talked about mortgage free and off the grid. The mortgage free off the grid people, uh, they don't own anything. So I like to be like right in the middle. I'm not really wanting to be involved in a lot of homeless, but let's say somebody's on a break of being homeless because they are running out of money. People are running out of money. And if I can sell, let's say I found a tiny house and I did a development, the square footage is between two to four to 600 square feet. And we're looking at selling them for forty to $50,000. This is in my mind. I have to sit down and, and, and figure this out. But my mindset is if someone came in and, I, and again, this is not for the homeless situation. This is for some young family or somebody that says, you know what, I'm running out of money or I can't afford to live here. And I'm down to my last 40,000. And they know that's not a lot of money. If they bought one of my $40,000 houses, one of the requirements I'm thinking is, you have to come in with at least 50 to 30% down. Okay, so if that's a $50,000 house or a $40,000 house, you come in with 20% down. Our goal is to have a community of mortgage-free people. Does, how does that sound to anybody? Does that sound crazy? Or, I mean, I, my heart and my passion go out to having people be able to own something and not be government dependent. And look and say, okay, the government helped me. The government should be helping us. We should, mm -hmm. they should be assisting us to make someone feel free to know that I've watched a couple of these YouTube videos. These sisters, they own their, 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 their mobile home or they own their, their little tiny houses and they are happy because they're free. That's what I want to see. I want a free-minded uh, community. What's your thoughts? Anybody can help me on that one? Shirley, that's why I'm here. You know, after years and years of going to Burning Man, understanding and learning so many different trade skills, engineering, plumbing, solar. It doesn't make sense that people should be victimized by not being able to meet a status quo that doesn't exist for anyone. And there is no ideal of middle class anymore. It is absolutely audacious to think that anyone will be able to survive in the next 50 years based upon the way our economic system is going. So your question is not stupid, it's profound. And I'm just thankful that you exist and are in that position to start the change. It's when we acknowledge that there is a problem that we become part of the transition and the change. So I feel as though we're all here because we know what the inadequacy is. How do we level the playing field so that now these people can then begin to participate and take the equity and the, the small value that they have and rebuild America as we see fit? 
because I think our whole goal is to not watch it all go under, but to give people mobility, transportation, as well as economic standing so that they are then able to take a little bit and equate generational wealth. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. I love it. I feel at home. Thank you so much. Other comments? Well, I just want to say that I appreciate all that too. I think um, I think what we're doing here is is right on on track with that. I know uh, my other organization, Forever Safe Spaces. That's another one of our number one. It's why Carol and I popped together on this. We kind of like we're birthing a lot of very similar ideas around the same time, and uh, getting you know I work with a lot of um, underprivileged artists. Um, in multiple communities and that chance to ever even get to the point of having $25,000 is outrageous. Do you know what I mean? Like that's not even realistic right now. So however we can mitigate that because Forever Safe Spaces is really ends up being a bit of a crowdsourcing platform developed to really align people with resources and those who need resources, right? And uh, whatever that may be. And uh, so we've, we're we working around a property out on Camino Island that's a little bit bigger, that's a 1.5 acres that we may end up um, putting that third uh, tiny house out there, creating some more off the grid programs um, and also a little bit like more, you know, not quite so out in the middle of everything educational programs around sustainable building around you know like off the grid lifestyles um and bringing making that accessible to our communities because like you said you've been out to burning man and there's a lot of communities that have all that information but you know a lot of my young kids come in they have never even used a saw right so how do we get them there they don't know how to build fire they don't know how to do things we got to start with the basics so we want to ultimately probably teaming up with BIPOC SAC, get our, you know, with that property, which has one main big house, 1.5 acres, has a nice little meadow. We could probably put six more houses out there and then run some, run some like uh, seasonal programs in agriculture, um, you know, all of that. That's not my area. My area is the building. I'm a builder. So I get, a, I get up on the building and the painting and the arts and the things and tiles, do ceramics, you know, we'll put a kiln. Anyway, a lot of cottage industry stuff that'll help people. So, cause the idea is like, yes, we want to get to thriving, but we got to get to that level first, right? We got to at least get level <laughs> so that we're like, you know, to get beyond surviving. And I think that's where we're here. And that's, you know, kind of the work that I'm here to do is help get some of these young people to that state so that then they can be, you know, we, we've got, we're running Forever Safe Spaces as a social purpose corporation. Um, and that way, everybody that works with us and through us builds equity in, in the corporation with us. So it ends up ultimately being a community owned um, company. So, um, and that is gonna be, you know, hopefully we can buy one little piece of land. We've got friends, I've got a friend um, in community that's got a hundred acres down in Texas that wants to take 50 of that and turn that into a little bit of what this is. So, you know, like this, this can go, but like you've got this little model here in the city, we got little models. We need to prove these models to our communities. Cause as much as you see videos and whatever's of other people doing it out there in the land, that's just YouTube land, man. People need to know it's realistic in our neighborhood. And that's what feel, right? Cause we, we all heard about it. It's not new information. It's just a matter of like, can we do it? Yes, we can. Absolutely. I, I, I love what you have to say with that because it's so true. If we look at, a, 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 there's larger parcels outside of urban communities. And there are people with a lot of land. One of my neighbors, I'm outside of Texas. They have 300 acres of land and they're not doing nothing with it. I'm like, dude, you gonna do anything with this land? Well, you know, we just kind of, it's a lot of land where you could really be helping somebody. You could be building some let type us, of community. Let us get a hundred. Let us get a hundred. Yeah, just get, so give us 25, give us 25 let, acres. Uh, and yeah, let us I'll take that. I'll tell you, you know, we could, we could run a whole thing. Come on now, really? I, I do want to address the 25, the $20,000 down. So again, let me tell you where my niche is. Everyone has different niches. Mine is middle class. 
Now, the average, I'm a real estate agent as well. I've been licensed since 1997. I had to go back and renew my license recently. And I said in the class, and they said the middle, this is what's announced at the class last week. I said for three days, and they said the middle range home in California is 570. The middle range home in California, 570. 10% down, that's uh, $57,000, you guys. That's a lot of money. And people can't afford that. OK, but let's 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 talk about affordability for those who can. Let's say someone says, you know, I got 10 percent down. I can do that. You convince them into the tiny home aspect saying, look, split that into half because there are people with money. Again, I'm in the middle. I'm not with the uh, there's different aspects of the high end and the low income and the government subsidized. I'm trying to get an average person to be uh, owner of their property and have it so that it's own free and clear. So I'm, I'm addressing these people who would normally think, well, I got 10% down. Look, on a $200,000 house, 10% of that is 20,000. Where do you see $200,000 houses anywhere right now? In, in New York or California or Chicago? I, I, mean, I mean, unless you're way out in the boonies. But if you can put me somewhere closer to the urban communities and you still got that 20,000 and people got money, don't get it twisted. They didn't stuff some closets and some cans with this P-P-E-D-A-A-F money on top of their cousin next door. And they all then got together as family, the smart ones, saying, Negro, how much you got? How much you got? Look up and they say, how you got two, three hundred thousand dollars But they ain't gonna tell you all that. But if you go there and say, look, you got 20, you can own this free and clear. I'm Charlie, in that middle can road. I, can I interject? Can I interject? Go ahead, sister. Because the other thing is that we have to realize, like, I'm the fourth quarter shareholder catalog cover for Square. People can make money. You're absolutely correct. And to the other young lady, Carolyn, yo, we only need to show them the way. Right now, investing in cryptocurrency and taking a small little percentage, that $5,000, you can flip it ever so seamlessly. You just have to learn the patience of the market. When you can evaluate the market, you can make, your, you can make what you have grow. And that's how I was able to move to Seattle and make all these moves because the PPP ended up allowing me to get the materials and the resources to have a piece that went to Sotheby's auction house this year. It's all in showing people how to take what they have and increase it so that it can make them the money that they need. It, miseducation has been our downfall. And with this many resources and people willing to share knowledge, this is pretty much a guaranteed win. You know, I think the question isn't if people can get the money, it's how do we share the knowledge so that we're guaranteeing the people who are ready for the change are able to then benefit and or learn how to save, learn how to invest and learn how to move up that ladder. And then what I'm hearing you say is how these people are able to learn to play the game. Every yeah. night or maybe once a week, yeah, yeah. I play. Yeah. There's a game, okay, there's a game called Rich Dad, Poor Dad Classic. Yeah, I went to, to that game. <laughs> it gets old and redundant. Take that rich dad, poor dad, and just play it every night on your it's phone, like you'll be watching it's TV. Just play it because it, it supports. Every day too. Say it again. Like, I said, and to keep the soul balance a little, Octavia. Okay. Like, okay, yeah, that's a plug. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> what Caroline is setting is on point, though. She she's got the right concept when you look at having those assistants and, and working with communities that don't know what to do. They don't know how to build it out. So if we can bring a balance of the top, the middle and the bottom, again, I'm talking yeah. from a middle perspective. I'm not talking yeah. from, you know, the government help here and there. I want people to say, I own this. I don't need yeah. so So I'm really glad that you said that because I think that one of the things that um, is this project is very, um, aligned with is this idea of wealth generation, right? And so for me, I'm leaning or personally, I'm leaning towards land trusts where the community actually owns the land. It's the folks that actually own the land and then artists or whichever group, um, because I'm also getting approached by folks who could see this model that's not just for artists, right? It could be for um, single moms. It could be for folks coming out of incarceration. This whole model in terms of actually having a house, putting ADUs around it, or having a piece of land, putting a large um, ADU and then smaller ones around it, or 
working with an organization that actually has land in terms of if they want to do this on their land. So in terms of those models, it's really um, critical for me to really think about what are the many different ways that you can conceive of owning land, especially for the next generation. Like for me, I'm, I'm looking at sustainability, sustainability models, um, decision-making models, um, hiring models, uh, housing models, <laughs> social Girl, justice Girl, models. can I jump in for you a know, second? You um, said finding land. I would say to all of you guys, what are we in, October? We're, no, we're in November, right? We're moving towards tax sales right now. We all have a little cash under our bank. We need to start looking at land tax sales. That way you own the land free and clear. Because everybody talk about houses, but the lands get foreclosed on too. And a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of people foreclosed on. Don't let them yeah, fool you. This, there this are. Inflation it's is, is a reality. Uh, yeah, it's we certainly can't bail everybody out. But if we can pick up some parcels, or like uh, Caroline said, 100 acres or two. I love what Caroline said. Come on now. You've got to yeah. go. I'm here so there for, are a couple of things with BIPOC Stack that um, we are actually a part. So I, I've also been like looking at this idea of how do you actually take like percentages of whatever the mortgage is and reinvesting that in the land. And so there have been conversations about Bitcoin. There have been conversations about like uh, digital, digital, um, stuff that could assist in that but the other part of it is that the city like one of the things you said earlier Shirley that really hit home for me is that you know there is land out there and there are people that are not using that land and also the government has land that they are not using and in Seattle currently the city just created a public development agency which their body their job is basically to assess which organization or which parcels of city land um are not being used and need to go back to the community or they can help the community basically BIPOC community um, purchase land, right? But my thing is that, and this is what I'm partially struggling with, which is why I love that uh, there's so many brilliant minds on here today is this idea of collective ownership, shared ownership and having folks that actually own their house and they pay the mortgage on the house, but the mortgage is cheaper than even rent in Seattle, you know, at a rate that, that is doable for folks. Um, and also looking long-term, like in terms of the, the contracts for that, how does that feasibly work into the future? And how does a land trust work, right? Is that even really feasible or should we just like, what Carolyn's talking about, just own the land outright. But to me, a community land trust is that model, but it's slightly different because everybody actually owns the land. It's not just, you know, this idea of land ownership where like on Camino Island, your friend actually owns that land, right? Carolyn, not you, not. Yeah, no, but we will be purchasing it from, from them. We will. So okay, we cool. That's that's our plan. We'll be purchasing it from them as Forever Safe Spaces, holding that in a trust, and then people will be able to purchase their houses on that land, but the land itself will stay in community. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. it's very much the same model, and there uh, and Carolyn, then people who this. work how, it. How are you dealing with state tax? How are you, Carol and Caroline? You got state tax. Um, California, I mean, excuse me, Texas state tax ain't no joke. If you are a veteran, if you are a veteran, you pay no state tax. So I don't know if you thought about putting a board together with all veterans and that's uh, disabled veterans in Texas pay no state tax. Another thing in Texas, Texas pay no income tax. So if you work in Texas, you pay no income tax. That's one reason why I'm working with Texas because uh, California is crazy. But go ahead. The same applies for Seattle as well. Everything that you just said, it's the same in Seattle um, with California. Well, it, so if you're going to buy land, again, I'm, I'm trying to get an answer as far as, and, and help me have a clarification. If we do this land and we acquisition of shared land, who compensates for the taxes? Is there going to be an HOA? 
I mean, how are you guys planning on dealing with that? Are you going to yeah. get a waiver from the state or a waiver from the city? Uh, you, you know, the government wants their money. Uncle Sam, yeah. here he is. So there's two prongs to that. Currently, right now, we have a fiscal sponsor that works with all of our tax stuff and turning all that in and making sure that a percentage of whatever money comes in the door is facilitated in the right direction. Um, the second part of that is basically um, in terms of how folks are, like, how can I explain it? Um, it's not that we're going to have a homeowners association. It's, how can I explain it? I'm trying to figure out how to explain it. In terms of a land trust, folks would actually own the land, but currently we're working with a group called, we're partner with a group called um, Brighton Development Group, which is, um, it used to be the Seattle Senior Foundation, and they are the ones that actually own the house that we're um, igniting. And the Brighton Development Group is um, a team of about five to six African American black owned um, property development real estate like folks in Seattle that are seriously wanting to shift and change Brighton neighborhood which is southeast Seattle primarily um, primarily Asian and um, southeast African and African American communities and so one of the ideas that we've been working on is this facilitation of capital. And so because the Seattle Senior Foundation already owns five acres out here and um, they have changed their name to the Brighton Development Group because their new focus is basically on making sure and ensuring that folks can own their own land and, and redevelop in a more social and just way. And so working with them as the Brighton Development Group, they're already starting to capitalize on, um, I, think, I think they're trying to raise a couple million dollars, maybe more than that, um, in development costs. And the concept is that we, they would purchase the land and we would pay it or put our project on that piece of land and have it so that over time, the cost of the house and the cost of the land is coming to us in terms of our purchasing power of that piece of land. So that's one model that we're working on right now. Um, the other model is one of the reasons I went to Texas was to start to research like the land and the real estate there. Um, and like Shirley said, oh my gosh, it's like the best place to buy land for sure. <laughs> it's, I was, I could get like an acre of land for like $40,000, you know, and I'm getting grants up here for a million dollars, million dollars. And it's like, what the heck? Like, well, I don't know if I, I am, I'm, we're hoping for that grant. <laughs> we will get that grant, positive mindset. Um, but in terms of looking at other places across the country, I had a conversation with one artist who couldn't make it today, but he owns land in um, Colorado. And I think it's like 20 acres. And he is interested in this model being placed there. Um, so it's, it's been really cool because I think that there may be other opportunities to be able to do this, not just in Seattle, which is a very, it's, it's a challenging place to do it um, for sure. And for various reasons, like the zoning and the permitting, depending on where the house is. Um, and in terms of green infrastructure, the, there's a lot more stringent permits, um, permitting requirements, but I'm hopeful. Um, so those are the couple of things that I just, yeah, wanted to interject around um, possibilities for also doing it not just in Seattle and um, the idea of actually owning land, right? Um, yeah, that's my thought about that. <laughs> That's, I, I'm hoping that that is, that is one of the main goals of this project, is how do we do this in a sustainable way? Yeah. Um, other thoughts or input? Actually, before we do that, I know that Paul is still on the line. Paul, is it possible for you to give an introduction of who you are and your interest in this project? 
Yeah, so um And just so you know, this is being recorded. Yeah, I saw that. So it's good to see you, Carol. I thought Yeah, you, you to, too. Welcome. Going, yeah, thank you. I thought you were going to Atlanta. I just came back from Atlanta. I thought you were moving to Atlanta. No, not oh, yet. No, 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 I've no, been no. looking at Atlanta. They have right. really great real estate too. <laughs> so anyway, my name is Paul Jackson. Um, I uh, moved here in 1998 here being Seattle. Uh, when I finished my degree in computer engineering, I've done research at Boeing and virtual and augmented reality. About 2010 or so, I switched into uh, digital video production. I now live in Tacoma with my beautiful artist wife, Jasmine Brown, uh, who actually two weeks ago unveiled a statue, uh, a brass full-size bronze statue, a brass full-size statue of J. Uh, Billy Ray, Billy Ray Her Hurley, a 17-year-old who was unfortunately murdered in a, in a gun violence incident. And so she's doing that. She's got some other um, sculptures that she's doing, some um, public public art programs that she's doing. She's also a manager at ArtCore. Uh, I personally am I'm retired on disability right now, um, but I'm still doing things as far as the virtuality. Um, there's a team I'm working with uh, that is combining with Swedish Neurological Institute to allow patients with multiple sclerosis the ability to experience um, virtuality scenes and such. And so I'm doing that kind of stuff. I'm also just finished working with uh, teaching, co-teaching a six week course on chronic disease self-management through the African American Reach and Teach uh, Health Ministries there in Renton. Okay. <clears throat> Personally, I'm not, I mean, I know about tiny houses and such, but right now, I'm more focused on um, my wife and her son, her getting, him getting out of high school, figuring out what he's going to do for his life. And Jasmine is also trying to figure out what she's going to do because she's juggling a lot of things. I'm trying to help her. We share an office. She's right here next to me. So she's giving me the crazy look. But anyway, I like to ramble too. So um, I'm, I'm open to, for questions. So if anybody has any questions, uh, I'll be willing to answer. Hi, Jasmine. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for that great introduction. Um, and everybody gave introductions earlier, so I will send out the link to this because it is recorded. You'll get to see other folks earlier. Um, well, with that said, that's pretty much, that's all the updates and information in terms of next steps. Um, we're basically looking at launching the house. It, the residency center opened October 11th. Um, and so we're starting the membership program. And this past Friday, we had our very first member event where six, no, was it six, eight folks um, from Sustainable Seattle came and they did their um, pre-retreat here. It was all board members, which is really cool. And we gave them a tour and talked about the project. That was really exciting. So we're open. <laughs> so Carol, yes. where, where exactly is it located? So it's on 4627 South Holly Street. A house? Okay. It's a house and um, there are multiple spaces that you can reserve. There is an annual membership or you can pay quarterly, or you can also um, sweat labor slash barter your time by um, doing work around the house, like volunteering. So every um, hour equals $25, I believe it is. And five hours gets you a month membership to just like come and use our Wi-Fi. There's the Wi-Fi can accommodate about 25 folks um, or a projector and screen or the kitchen or, you know, and there's outdoor space. There's also three porches, patios, one's out front and two are in the back. Um, it's raining here now, so I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but, <laughs> but, it's, yeah, but it's pet friendly. Um, yeah, and so we're just like looking for members basically right now and folks that want to get out of their house and hang out with other people. So it's a, it's an amazing space for intimate encounters basically. And we're just igniting the house now. Yeah. Nice. But it's in Seattle. I live and in, it's I live in Seattle. In, I live What's in that about get out of the house? <laughs> Jasmine, that's a question. What you, she's reading me up. So, so. <laughs> Go ahead, Jasmine. You want to get on? No, I was, I was just asking what she said about getting out of the house. Oh, see, Jasmine said what you say about getting out of the house. And yeah. So they, they have some patios, porches that they're letting people use kind of like a co-working space it is like a co-working yeah. space yeah. So, yeah 
And so you, you, can, you can volunteer to spend some time there to help them update the house. And for $25 an hour, you're saying, Carol? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So if you spend an hour, you get 25 bucks. Yeah, I can. Afterwards. Yeah, Carol's going to say the info. I will. Um, let me see if I can. I can put the link in the, in the chat. chat. Okay. Yeah. Not that I have anything against uh, Seattle, man. I lived there for like 20 plus years, but since I live in King, I'm in Pierce County now. Uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, Tacoma. But I'm still involved with some organizations there in Seattle. So I'm trying to juggle it all. Yeah. Um, Miss Jessie actually lives in Tacoma, but she works here in Seattle, okay, okay. and her daughter is also a part of this project, Nas. She also works um, through, they both work through um, Harriet Tubman Foundation for Safe Passage, okay. and so they're both kind of consulting on this project, um, but she was telling me that Seattle, or not Seattle, but Tacoma is actually doing really good in terms of looking at those kinds of models there too, so I don't know um, if you're interested in possibly bringing it to Tacoma, but I, right now, Tacoma is interested in all housing models. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was involved a little bit with the Hilltop. There's a group here in the Hilltop, uh, and unfortunately, the, the the brother went to Yale. Oh, that, that, that was, okay, you might as well unplug it and, and, and unplug your headphones and let me. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to be in another Zoom meeting. That's why I'm. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> he's right next to me. Um, but I think he's. You're talking about Chris. Oh, you know, the Hilltop Action Coalition, yeah. or yeah, that uh, Chris, Chris, Chris Paul Jordan went yeah. out to Yale. So, but there's a plenty of other people that are still active. I'm sure there are. In the Hilltop. Okay. What's the name of the place he had? Five five, five. five five. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. I'll do back out. Let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Uh, geez, um, okay. But yeah, yeah. Is a cool place. And actually, Jasmine used that place for her uh, when she was doing her sculpture. And so, but anyway, um, I, mean, there's, I mean, we need we need housing here in Tacoma desperately because there's, a, there's a, 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 you know, everybody has a, a growing homeless or houseless population, right? So, you know, seeing tents in the street, it's really depressing. And so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's everywhere, unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's, you know. It's really sad. Um, but, you know, one of the things that was really interesting about what um, Shirley and I had a conversation, I think about a month ago, a month and a half ago. Do you remember this conversation, Shirley, where we were actually talking about buying a town in Texas that you could actually buy, like, a large, large amount of land for what you're actually getting here in Seattle that I thought was really interesting? You know, if you drive through the South, there's these little small towns that you kind of go, where the hell am I? And um, I remember four years ago, I would just drive up little small back road highways, not popular town, nobody really, but it, it kind of almost looked like Maypearl where, but, and the buildings weren't really being utilized. And I thought if someone, the infrastructure is already there commercial wise, the mm -hmm. built wise, you would just have to saturate the businesses and there's little small towns and then see if there's a land from there. There's also certain lands I was looking at, they were owned by slaves and the city was created by slaves. Um, I'm fascinated by that because I'm a descendant of slaves. My family dates back to 1619. My father had me when he was really old and, and he would be 101 right now if he was alive. My mother was born 1928, my father was born 1920. Um, I, my family, I can, I've dated back so far to 1854, Beaumont, Texas. So uh, Texas, uh, and my mother's from Arkansas, my father's from Louisiana. That, that part of the South I have fascination with because a lot of people don't know their roots. So we keep talking, you know, a lot of people talk about going back to Africa. Well, then go back to the South, you know, go study your census bureaus and things of that nature. So when me and Carol were talking, I said, Carol, and one day me and Carol are going to get in the car. And this is, I mean, this is, you, it's, it's time. It takes time to do what we're doing, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's sacrifice of time and people think well you guys get money you ought to get money for just looking looking takes time um yeah. creating acquisitions take time and and you it's not luck it's just that i put the time in where i was driving through cities saying i wonder how much this whole little town if i had about two million i bet you i could buy this whole little town area and then build from there and then work with the city and work with the mayor 
you know, there's probably some guy sitting at home scratching his balls, watching TV. He the mayor of the town. I'm, I'm serious. It's, it's, it's kind of like that laid back. Like, what you want, girl? What you want? Uh, well, I want to tell how much money you got. You know, we don't have too many folks from the big city come up in here. Those towns exist. We laugh, but those towns yeah. exist. And those yeah. could be a template to move on because, and I'm not trying to be negative, but, you know, California's got a lot of migration and immigration. And they always tell Black people we need to assimilate with them. But these people don't assimilate with us. You know, the civil rights is given to everybody else but descendants of slaves. So I'm like, okay, do you people. I'm not going to keep anting on about you and what they get. Like recently, Biden is trying to propose, what, $450 million towards the immigrants. And he's already, they, look, they, in the high-rise, nice condos in California, honey, they have already put the Afghanistans. You got people homeless downtown LA and you're going to give the Afghanistans and they call me racist. I ain't giving no energy to that. I always tell my son, I can't put my energy towards that. I got to pour it towards things that make sense. So yes, me and Carol are going to get in the car and we're going to drive. We might pick a town. Say, girl, what do you want to do with this? And, and would they be willing to work with us? And how much money do you think we can? How much, how much money do you think they want? You know, I'm saying cash is king. Talk is cheap. Action is work. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so Cheryl, you may have noticed or seen my shirt. PVMU, Prairie View AM University, is an HBCU about 30 miles outside of Houston. I did my undergrad and my master's there. But you I'm need to hook up with my son. He graduated. He went to Prairie View AM. His okay. wife graduated from Prairie View AM. Uh, his wife is an artist and a drawer. Okay. Uh, I got to get your number. Yes. I got to get your number, my okay. talking brother. Yeah, so again, not from Texas originally, but um, if it wasn't for Prairie View, I wouldn't be here today. I, it led me on to get my PhD from Texas A&M, and that's how I came to Seattle to do research work. But yeah, I mean, I agree with you completely. There's towns all throughout Texas that you could probably buy. Um, I don't like Texas, but I mean, if, if I said I would never go back again, but you know, I never say never. I've been saying, I've been told to say Look, never. Never say again. never. Never say never because of the tax and the and the state and city benefits exactly whoever is going to work with us as a city and a state to uh, support substance uh, you know sub step what's the word sustainability yes. and as well as mortgage-free living you know texas believes in mortgage-free because they're gonna get you with that tax That's so it. you don't want to be over and indebted with mortgages california is full of mortgages I mean, I, I've been in real estate for almost 30 years. I remember I worked with a client, you guys, they had three mortgages, a first, a second, and a third. Oh. And, and then it was during the market where the market was crashing and they were paying on the first, but they weren't paying on the second and the third. And they had to figure out a way to negotiate because they were upside down. I've dealt with so many creative ways. It was crazy. And I told myself, if we can just get back to a simple life, just a simple life, in this country, we all would do better. But there's a generation that don't know that because they're over indebted. Yep, watch so much TV. Little reality thing. Wow, wow, that's been refreshing. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> what a great to discussion everybody. today. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm not trying to put everybody down. No, yeah, I love it. I mean, it just gets you to think, you know? about a whole lot of different ways that this can be approached it's exactly. just really amazing and that's what this is for <laughs> um okay. i bill i couldn't tell if you were going to jump in or not or if you were like just thinking out loud <laughs> just taking it in taking it in awesome so what folks don't know is um, Bill was my professor in my master's program way back when. Um, and we've known each other for a really long time. He's, we've been, we've worked on projects before together um, and just a really amazing human being. So thank you for coming again. <laughs> um, well, with that said, that's basically my updates and um, next steps for us is just to get give big through the big old hoop which is going to be like a whole week of marketing for me so I'm just prepping stuff for that and then um 
overseeing and working with, or not actually overseeing, that's a horrible word, um, basically working with JJ and Carolyn um, with the new floor that's going to go in and the deck, and then looking at our membership structure. So if you guys know folks that are interested in a space, yeah, I'll send the link. I'll put that in the email with the video link for this actual um, recording. Uh, and I'm going to be here in Seattle probably till the end of November. And then I'm going to DC where I was hoping that Quest could talk about that a little bit, but she um, was unable to stay for the full time that happens sometimes. Some folks come at the end, some folks come at the beginning. Just note that, um, which is one reason why I record. So Quest um, introduced me to a woman in DC who owns eight properties and she is African-American and she actually wants to do this on those properties as well. And so I'm going to DC at the end of this month to go meet with her and she's going to give me a tour. We're going to talk about that. And like, they have really good connections with the city government there in DC and know a lot of people. They both grew up there, um, are deeply embedded in that community. And so anyway, so those are some of my next steps is just making sure that we have, you know, we, at the end of the year, we're at the end of the year, at the end of the budget, all that stuff, we work in checking that stuff out and trying to get ready for next year and hoping we're, or not hoping, but knowing that we're going to still be doing this next year as well. So <laughs> with that said, time is of the essence and we're already over 16 minutes. So um, we don't normally go over this far, but it was such great discussion that I didn't want to stop it. I thought... That, that was amazing. I love to hear people's input and output and all that put. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have a good day and thank you for hanging out with us. The next one will be in two weeks. All right, later. <laughs> later, bye, JJ. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you, Shirley. Bye. Bye, Paul. You take care. And Jasmine, you too. Let's Jasmine, catch up. Yeah, we, we should. Jasmine wants to talk to you because she went to Howard. And so she's interested in going back to D.C. But anyway, she wants to get in. Uh, I was just, just saying that I, I'd love to hear the outcome of what happens in D.C. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. I'll keep you posted. <laughs> okay. Have a great day. All right. Hey, Jeff.